Hey, how about you, everybody? Welcome to the Auburn Live Recruiting Show. I'm your host, Jeffrey Lee, Senior Recruiting Editor for Auburn Live on 3. Today is our recru- recording date. It's Tuesday, January the 16th, 2024. You're probably listening to this on Wednesday, January the 17th, 2024. So keep that in mind if we let a today, tomorrow slip throughout the recording. Uh, we got a lot to talk about today. We got some uh, new commitments, transfer portal happenings. Uh, junior day just passed, and uh, here to talk to me at all, and you, they, they can talk to you about it as well. Mr. Cole Pinkston and Mr. Jay Head, how about you, fellas? How about you? How about you, big Hey, guy? did you see the uh, the guy post the um, – Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that. all the different yeah, things you can do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's not. I said, bro, that's my broken heart. <laughs> <laughs> Lord have mercy. Um, all right, but we'll, let's, we'll, we'll, we've got to uh, talk about transfer portal recruiting. We're going to get some questions from the corner. Before we do, anybody looking for a house in or around Auburn, Opelika area, hell, go out to Lee County. You're looking for a house out there, you need to get rid of the one you're in. Look no further than the help you need. Miss Jessica Andrews with the Talons Group. Give her a call, 334-704-4442. She is a five-star realtor consensus five-star, folks. She's really good. If you don't believe me, just ask me. Give her a call. Jessica Andrews with the Talons Group, 334-704-4442. Tell her we sent you. All right, folks, let's uh, let's talk a little transfer portal. Auburn, I think, has eight transfer portal commitments. Is that right? That's, That's correct. correct. Eight, and we're expecting potentially a ninth as early as today, Wednesday. There you go. Uh, with uh, Alabama transfer defense to back Antonio Kite, we got word um, earlier this week that he was somebody to keep an eye on, and we have been keeping an eye on him. We confirmed on Tuesday that uh, he is definitely uh, an option for Auburn, and then later on in the day we confirmed that he is expected to be on campus on Wednesday. Uh, Antonio Kite, he played in seven games this past season as a redshirt freshman, played some secondary, some mop-up secondary duty, played a lot of special teams on, in, in, in some of those games. He's got three years of eligibility. And uh, would he fit well with Jaron Thompson, the Texas transfer safety guy who just committed to Auburn, signed with Auburn? Jay had talked to us about these two DBs, and do they fit what Auburn needs? Let's start with Jaron Thompson. And I think he is absolutely what you needed. And I think Cole can get in this in greater detail. But we had a massive hole, in my opinion, from an experience standpoint in the back end, transitioning from who you lost to the NFL draft in Jalen Simpson to what you currently had on the roster. Having this young man who's played in just a ton of Big 12 football, been a part of a rebuilding program in Texas where he got to see what a rebuild is like up close and personal and kind of what is expected you know, from Steve Sarkeesian, who I think is a demanding coach, coming to another demanding coach in Hugh Freeze and what they're going to be expecting of him on that defense. His ability in space as a coverage safety, I think it just checks a lot of boxes for this staff and gives them an insurance policy. You've got some young guys like Terrence Love and Sylvester Smith and a handful of others that I think they really believe, look Juan Robinson, that they really believe in. But this is a guy that's done it. You can put him out there. You know what to expect. You know he's going to be able to – quarterback the defense, if you will, in the secondary, make sure he makes all the calls, all the checks. So really big piece from that standpoint. And then Antonio Kite is a young man that's just extremely athletic. I watched him a good bit. Uh, as far as his high school cutups are concerned, I think he is originally out of – Aniston. Aniston, Alabama. Aniston, Alabama. I was going to say Abbeville, but Aniston sounds significantly better. <laughs> um, but very athletic. I think he played some safety in high school, played some corner. He's predominantly played corner at Alabama. I don't have that much of a breakdown of what he's been like, but I can tell you this. When I asked around to people who should know as far as how he's performed on Alabama's campus to this point, they told me the sky's the limit for this kid. Now, he's still going to need to get game reps. He's going to have to get exposed in live game action, obviously, to improve. But you've got some veterans there that can help him kind of get up to speed, and I think he adds another body to that room to create functional depth. It makes a lot of sense, especially with the two losses that you had today, one of those being in the secondary with Donovan Kaufman moving away. So this doesn't mean, you know, if you need to move, if you need to move who we've got out there at corner right now into nickel, this gives you more flexibility to do that, okay? You're not bound by any means to keep anybody on the outside because you're creating additional numbers. 
And I don't think they're done there yet. I think, Jeffrey, when you talk to people, two to three was what they were looking for in the defensive secondary. I think they probably get to three at this point. Now, it is probably going to come post-spring portal window, if I had to guess, where they'll make that pick up. But I do think they're going to get to three now. The numbers are easily there for them to be able to do that. And with that, I'll give it to Cole and let you take it, take it away, my man. Yeah, I mean, I, I voiced some concerns with Auburn secondary going into 2024 uh, with what they have currently. Jaron Thompson uh, helps that a big time. I mean, he he's a veteran guy that, dude, he's played a lot of football. On a high level and made big plays and pretty good in run support, you know, kind of kind of a medium sized body at safety with pretty good length, knows how to get in the passing lanes, this kind of stuff. I see some good things from him on film and he's obviously just a a high football IQ guy. I I think what makes me feel better, let's just say if you were to land Antonio Kite like we think might be possible at this point, um, then you have three guys that are all starter quality at safety that are true safeties, in my opinion. So Jaron Thompson, Laquan Robinson, and Antonio Kite. I think those three are true safeties, and you don't really have to worry about, you know, where do they fit exactly, or is, is one of these guys a nickel? And maybe they could, but I think they're true safeties. So that kind of helps everything else fall into place, if you ask me. Corner, you can start to figure that out. And I, I, that's why I think Antonio Kite would be sort of the cherry on top for what, the safety for, for what the safety room and the secondary needed. And uh, Jaron Thompson, man, even if you don't get Antonio Kite, he was just massive. I thought that was a massive pickup. Went to number one in my portal rankings. Oh, yeah. Yep. Well, uh, let's see. This eight, Albert has eight transfers, all enrolled, all starting classes. And both of the uh, Jaron Thompson will be doing the same. Antonio Kite's believed to, uh, gonna be, if he were to come to Auburn, he would get uh, enrolled for the spring semester and be able to go through as well. Um, as far as high school JUCO recruiting, uh, of course, the JUCO's wrapped up, but high school recruiting, uh, still got Ron Williams out there. And then m- m- most of the attention, though, right now is turning to that 2025 class. And uh, certainly Auburn's gotten off to a huge start in the 2025 class. I think they've got eight commitments right now, a group ranked uh, number eighth in the country. Uh, I'm sorry, hold on. Let me, that's 2025. Uh, seventh seventh in the country you're exactly right eight commits seventh in the country most recent commit being uh, i think it was the uh, flip of antonio coleman no no relation to antonio coleman uh and then uh but albert's had a a handful of guys i guess two handfuls of guys on campus this past saturday for uh wasn't really a junior day but it was a it, it was a you know a dozen elite targets cole you talked to several of those guys before they left uh, what, what were some of the highlights from that from that uh, from that day? Um, they kind of got there late, around maybe two two thirty. We're used to them getting there in the morning, but I think the visit was supposed to be centric around the basketball game. That was the main thing. Um, a couple guys have already seen the basketball game. A couple of them had not, so it, it, they knew it was going to be a good atmosphere. Auburn, you know, again took care of business. Almost uninteresting at times the way they've been the Auburn basketball team because they're so good they're beating people that bad, but uh, the atmosphere was good. You know a lot of a lot of the guys talked about that. We caught them on the way out of um, that game, and I feel like I wrote a story this morning or uh, Tuesday morning about three guys. I feel like Auburn has surged with, and their interest is rising in Auburn. That's um, Derek Smith from from Selma, wide receiver from Selma. Um, <laughs> the problem, yeah, we the problem, yeah. undefeated. Well, well, here's the deal. Let's be, let's be transparent here. Cole was talking about Kite being a true safety and stuff. And yeah. the thing about him is the versatility, right? I, I, that was one of the things I read about his time at Alabama. Was so I, I was thinking Kite would be a cornerback, nickelback. Cole's here in safety, but that just shows you the, the versatility. Uh, yeah, of Antonio Kite. What I mean is he's a he's a seamless transition to safety. Corner is obviously on the resume too. <laughs> I was wrong about that. I was thinking safety all the way, but if he can do both, uh, even better. Because, like I said, you got Jaron Thompson and, and you got a safety, a true safety, a veteran guy. So everything else sort of falls into place after that. Antonio Kite, if they were to get him, maybe he moves around and does a lot of different things. You need a guy like that for sure. Keontae yeah. Scott, if you can alleviate, honestly, if you can alleviate 
Keontae Scott from playing corner too much. I think he's going to help at corner, but does he need to be there all the time? I just think his value is at nickel, man. I he needs you. to play nickel. I agree. And, and the thing about Kai is, is he's not expected to be an immediate, immediate contributor. Like he's got three years left. Laquan Robinson is expected to be immediate con- contributor. Jaron Thompson is expected to be. So there, I mean, on paper, you would think those are your two starting safeties, right? Who, who else is back there? Terrence Love. Terrence Love. Sylvester, Sylvester Smith. Smith. Caleb Wooden. Yep. Uh, you've also got uh, the two freshmen that just showed up in Thompson and Cole's guy from South Florida. Yeah, Kinsley Austin. So you've got. Some I noticed. Guys. Noticed Robin, Robinson, Robinson, and and Thompson being the two more. They're at least competing for a starting spot with SE, or, well, game experience. Correct. Yeah. It, even yeah. though one of those is in junior college, it's still right. getting reps at a more competitive level than high school. And then don't forget about C.J. Johnson. That's been also there for a year as well. He's in the mix. Yeah. Of Jeez, I forgot all about him. Yeah. In, addition, in addition to those. <laughs> okay. Uh, you've got a, a full safety room at this point, and you're right. It, it, he, I think Antonio Kite's got some positional versatility. He could fit in at safety. He could fit in at nickel. He could fit in at corner. He's an athletic kid that you get on campus, then you figure out what you're doing. All right, Cole, my bad, big dog. All right, so you were talking about the uh, high school guys coming in. They were going to that basketball game. You talked to a lot of them after the game. Um, uh, uh, Derek Smith being one. Yeah, three guys I felt like. I walked away from there. The buzz is that those guys have growing interest in Auburn, and that's Derek Smith is one of those, which he was already high on Auburn. So if it's growing with Auburn, you know that Auburn's way up there. And I, I actually think that Auburn could possibly have a slight lead there. That's the way I feel about Derek Smith right now. Um, the other two, Dontrell Glover, who very shortly after his visit to Auburn, he decommits from Alabama. Now, he named several schools, Miami, Missouri, Tennessee, Texas, Florida. I mean, he's going to take his time. He's going to go through everything. I don't think this is an Auburn lock. I think um, Auburn really got his attention, and he was already thinking about opening up his recruitment, and then Alabama's offensive line coach was not retained. So, that's why he decided to do this. Uh, but Auburn is, man, they have really asserted themselves into the mix now. And I wasn't sure where Dontrell Glover was on Auburn's board. But after doing some checking around, he has moved on in there. So he's he's one of the top priorities for in- interior offensive line. And then the, the third guy was Andrew Maddox, Ooh. four-star guy. Um, boy, he's he's got the look. He looks like he could play five or three technique, one one of the two, depending on you know, depending on how the new defense coordinator does things. Right. Whenever Auburn hires somebody, but he's he's one of those guys. <laughs> what happened? What what I missed this? Time. Whenever no. Auburn hires somebody. somebody oh yeah, yeah. The, the frustration in your voice. <laughs> I hear yeah. you. Come on, uh, who is I'm it? This week? We were pulling for the Browns last week. Who are we pulling for this week? Yeah, so we're pulling for the Ravens this week. Call, call. They might can do it. The Ravens are pretty good. Uh, anyway, that those are the three guys to me. Andrew Maddox, man, that's you know his brother's committed. His brother signed with Ole Miss, quarterback. So mm-hmm. being a Mississippi guy, you'd have to think that Miss, that Ole Miss is going to be big time. But he keeps coming back to Auburn. This is like his third trip, uh, or his first trip of twenty four. But I think he visited for two games or one, maybe. Have to go back and look. Yeah, he's a guy that's been there a couple times. I mean, Jeremy Garrett. This is just like he was with Cam Franklin, with mm-hmm. um, L.J. McCray, and these guys. I think Maddox is going to be one of those. He's yeah. going to be in that level. And really, I mean, at this point, your defensive line class is almost full, man. Yep. So you're talking about, hey, I got one spot. You better get in here. That that's going to play a factor, I think. Wow. Absolutely. <clears throat> Got four guys already committed. Jordan Crawford, four-star. Antonio Coleman, four-star. Malik Altria, a four-star. Kalen Ebers, a four-star. All four of those guys already committed. Um, and that's not including J.J. Falk, who's more of a, what, a five? Is he, it, I'd say he's an outside – I mean, he's an outside linebacker slash Jack. It, it's, Jack, okay. It's really contingent on how they want to play him. You know, I, I've heard various things where they may want to play him on the inside as a true inside linebacker. I've heard they may want to play him on the outside. I think it's going to be probably decided once you get a new defensive coordinator, they'll figure yeah. out how he fits in their system. Because if you hire Zach Arnett, maybe he's more of an outside guy. If you hire Chris Kiffin, maybe they see him more inside. 
it, it truly depends on the coordinator and the scheme they're going to be running, in my opinion. Is, is, is he lighter than Keldrick was at this point in his career? Significantly. Oh, really? Yeah, he is, but, man, he's big. I mean, he's he's in the 240, probably 235, 240 range. 235, so. yeah, when I checked around to about 235, which is big, and that's why I think he's probably going to move to Jack at some point or, you know, kind of a rush outside guy. Yeah. Just because it's already 235, it's hard, man. When you got a and, high school kid coming out of Highland Home, Alabama, you know the strength and conditioning program at Highland Home is not what it will be when he gets to Auburn. And that's no knock to, to Highland Home, okay? It's just – I'm, I'm from a small county school like that, I, I know. <laughs> no, me too, man. I, I get it. No, he's he's also pushing 6'5". So, I mean, he's got that prototypical edge type frame, and, and that – that could be where he ends up. I know that when he was when he committed to Auburn, it was Josh Aldridge's guy inside all the way with with the defensive scheme they've been running with Ron Roberts. So, again, that could change, and, and he fits that edge profile for sure. All right, let's uh, let's get, uh, got everybody called up on high school recruiting. Twenty twenty five is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, the rest of this month is contact period, so visits will be taking place pretty much on the weekends. We we expect twenty twenty five, twenty twenty sixes to come in. Tell you what, I thought some big news came out today. Speaking of 2025, oh, Juju Lewis. Yes. Big yeah. doll quarterback out of Carrollton High School, reclassified from 2026 to 2025 on threes. Chad Simmons broke that news. Also threw in there that he's going to be in Auburn soon. Yes. So put him. Yeah. Okay. We're going to get asked about that. Let's get to the <laughs> – we'll see, we're going we're gonna to ruin all the questions. Let's stop talking and then let's get to the questions. All right. Oh, Josh Kerbert. Uh, with the departures today, which was uh, on Tuesday, he means Donovan Kaufman and uh, the defensive end, Cam Robin, Cam, Cam Riley, Cam Riley. That's what I said. Cam Riley with the departures today. Will the staff bring in another safety with experience? And if so, what are some names to watch? Another safety with experience. No, I don't have any names. No names at this point. I think Antonio Kite's the only person we're aware of on the DB board mm -hmm. now. Alabama's had a lot of kids jump into the portal here lately. Arizona's about to have a lot of kids jump into the portal just because their head coach, Jed Fish, just went to Washington. Washington will ha is, has kids in the portal. So it's not over from that standpoint. And just because Auburn potentially can't get them into school by spring doesn't mean they can't commit to Auburn and enroll in the summer either. Right. So there's nothing prohibiting this staff from continuing to add guys. Now, I will tell you this. It's going to be extremely hard to hold on to a guy with them not being enrolled in school and other teams still coming at them that may have a later enrollment period. So, and we've seen that work against Auburn at times uh, before as well. So, it's just something to monitor. I think they're going to try to get as many kids as they can in before whatever the deadline is for enrollment. And then you'll probably see a pause on transfer portal recruiting till you get into the spring window, if I had to guess. I, I think that safety and linebacker are two and maybe even receiver are those are the positions where they're going to go through spring and really evaluate that and go all right how good are these young guys do we need how, any more yeah like safety you got terrence love you got sylvester smith are they ready that's what you're trying to figure out in spring can they help can this they year be quality depth you know because you got the guys i think in place who are going to start there and at linebacker at this at that point after spring, you're probably just looking to go, you know, can we get some quality depth? Another good rotational player. So I think you're watching those young guys really closely at those three positions, and then you'll reevaluate what you do with the portal. Jumpman AU speaking of Juju Lewis. See the new number one target at Auburn for 2025. I'm not ready to go that far. No. Uh, no. I mean, I think they've invested a lot, a lot in KJ Lacey. And so, look, Juju Lewis is a phenomenal player. I mean, he's the number one quarterback in that class. And, and I, I think we talked at least four or five podcasts ago about how good I thought he was. I mean, I, I yeah, I watched him hit a whole shot against Dontrell Glover and uh, Tavares. Uh, Langston Hughes? Yeah, against Langston Hughes. That was a throw that you see college guys make. So, I mean, he's got some legit arm talent. I, you would not turn a Juju Lewis down. I'm sure Hugh Freeze will do his best and continue to recruit him. But I think the push is still on K.J. Lace to get him in this class sooner rather than later, if I'm being honest from from my angle of what I see things. But what do you guys think? I completely agree, dude. I I, I think K.J. Lacey's going to have to tell them no before they move on. 
And by no, I, I know he's committed to Texas. Lewis is committed to uh, USC. Mm-hmm. Man, I just I, I don't expect Auburn to move on to KJ Lacey until February the tenth at the earliest, which is yeah, <laughs> yeah. When, when Ryan Williams is going to sign. Yeah, for for obvious reasons, I think KJ Lacey's still at the top, and, and it is look they like KJ Lacey too. That's not the thing. It, it's mm-hmm. just yeah, right. It's it's too it's it's a lot of good things that come with KJ Lacey. Not just hey, you're getting a good quarterback. You could really help yourself with Ryan Williams, and I think that's in the back of their mind too. And and help yourself in Sarah Land, which is a a school yeah. that is producing power five talent. Building a pipeline to a school like that is never a bad thing. And specifically, the way they've emphasized in state recruiting. Uh, right. Let's see here. Beef Stew zero seven zero two. What three positions on the team would you say are the best? From a talent and depth standpoint for 2024, three positions, talent. Kind of plays into recruiting, I guess, right? I mean, talent. Would you not put wide receiver in there? I, if, y'all are not ready to go there yet? Well, I, as far as raw talent, yes. But I got to see him. I got to see him live. I got to see what Cam Coleman does in spring. You know what I mean? Like, I, there's no question to me that 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 room has upgraded significantly. Yeah. But by comparison to other rooms, I still think the running back room is probably the most yeah. talented, in my honest opinion. Especially we're getting Jarvis Buzz back. I agree. Um, I I didn't see like a just a a bunch of flashiness out of that room this year, Mm-mm. but they're all really strong. I mean, they're all pretty strong, really solid. Uh, no less than solid, that's for sure. Every single one of them in that room. That's, and that's, that's good. That's point. You're right. You know what I mean? They're all, at a minimum, what, B-level running backs? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Would, now, Jeremiah Cobb could be the guy that you see, you know, break out. Yes, I please. Guess. Yes, I, please. I agree. And I, I think he's the most naturally talented running back in that room, and I don't think it's really all that close. But – Damari, Jarquez, yeah. you know what I mean? Those, those are guys that are potential 1,000-yard rookies. Solid. Very yeah, solid. Yeah, yeah, very solid. solid. The the layup here is tight end, I think. That's pretty much the layup because sure, fair, fair weather deal, Frazier. Frazier kind of jumped out a little bit this, this year. Uh, Riley, Micah Riley, now Rico Walker too. That's a that's a talented mm-hmm. specimen. You, you know, he could, be, he could be pretty special. So that's – DB for me, because I think you still have draft picks that are in that room. Keontae Scott, to me, is a draft pick. Uh, you got a lot of young, talented kids that have been in that system now for a year. Uh, to me, it, it, DB is still probably above wide receiver as far as the, yep. the third most talented room. And look, I, I'm not – I'm high on the offensive line room and what they've yeah, I hear you. Me, I, I, yeah, was I was going over my head. Mm-hmm. I'm high on it. The way they've reshaped that and the natural tackles they've got on this team now, guys. You I added know. three natural tackles this past offseason to combine with, you know, TJ Johnson, who they're extremely high on. Uh, yep. It is TJ Johnson, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, TJ. Tyler. Yeah, Tyler Johnson. Sorry. Uh, TJ, that's what they call him. Yeah, to go along with a Clay Whedon, who's they've got projected at right tackle right now and has surprised me with the way he's played and the things that I've heard about his game. Um, so I, I'm i impressed with what they've – and the favor Edwin. I mean, favor Edwin might favor have Edwin. the best frame of anybody in this past class. Seth Wilfred. Seth Wilfred. Another, that's the that's devil the, I'm talking about. When you start three tackle bodies, so you obviously bring in a portal player who's second to none as far as frame is concerned. Now, he's probably yeah. still needs to trim up somewhat, but a big left tackle for you. And then you bring in the junior college All-American and a high school All-American at tackle positions. And look at who you had at tackle this time last year. And I'm not trying to knock Dylan Wade. He did a hell of a job. But I, I want to give Jason Caldwell some credit for saying this. That's kind of like a Kendall Simmons type situation, right, where you put your best offensive lineman at left guard, yeah. left tackle, but really, yep. he's a guard. And if he goes to the NFL, he, maybe he's a you know a nine year pro in the NFL at guard. Right. So now you're able to play everybody at their natural position, and just makes the whole unit significantly better. Yep. Let's see here, Robert Dale one. By the way, you mentioned Abbeville earlier, mistakenly. I did. Who's from Abbeville? Mm. 
Mm. I think it was, was was it Chris Porter? He was. Mm. Abbeville High School. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, I got to watch Chris Porter practice live in person when I was in Auburn. It was a it was a sight, man. <laughs> Let me put it like that. Mm. That dude was fun, son. Yes, he was. How many edge players, folks, are we going to take in 2025? And what does the board look like after J.J. Falk? How many edge players, y'all think? So This is the position where I expect some change. Yeah. Okay. I expect some change in strategy, at least. Okay. Because with Ron Roberts, he had the jack position, which I don't. I really don't think you're going to call it that anymore, if I had to guess. Now, the, the guy you get might – you know, he might be a guy that calls it Jack or whatever. There's all these names they use for him. At the end of the day, most defense is like a stand-up edge rusher. <clears throat> um, but they all have sort of different uses in different defenses. So I, I was looking at the Jacks, and I, and I know you got Jamonte Waller, and he should be able to help out really quickly. And But I, I feel like they need more right now. I feel like they need at least one more guy in that room right now to be able to help. Especially if an injury happens, you're and down. They didn't to, even go after a guy. Yeah, so I, I find that interesting. And, and if you were talking about Cam Riley being a guy jumping down there, well, that's that's out. So yep. was it was it the Buck position under Schmetting? Buck. Buck. Well, no, he called it. They called it stud. Stud. Buck, Buck stud. was his, it was Kevin Steele. Buck. Okay. Buck was Kevin Steele because I remember they played that song over the loudspeaker when they. <laughs> well, yeah, and realistically, in Kevin's defense, Kevin had called it a jack until he got to Auburn. That was Will Muschamp's terminology. He kept it as Buck because that's what Champ had set forward, and he didn't want to confuse the kids, so he used the same same verbiage. Oh, Will. Uh, real quick on some uh, some of those edge boards. Uh, I'm looking at the offers. Uh, let's see. You've got Zion Grady, who was there. Yeah, uh, he'll be maybe the top guy. Zion Grady committed to Alabama. For now, he was in Auburn on Saturday. Very good friends with some other commitments. Uh, so we'll see. Um, Jared Smith is another guy. Uh, let's see. C.J. May was there as well. He's committed to Notre Dame. I just don't know where he is on the board. Uh, Grayshawn Swain from Jemison in Huntsville. Just some of the in-state guys, some of the more popular names that we're familiar with. Familiar names, we should say. Uh, let's see. Welders AU. What is the level of interest on both sides for K.J. Lacey? Juju Lewis and the fellow from California, Queen Latifah's son, right? <laughs> <laughs> what is your ranking for these three in both fit and ability at Auburn? Uh, this is a y'all question. Now, who's the guy from California? Who's he referring to there? The one that we just offered. Katifa? Oh, yeah. Latif. Latif. Maybe that's it. I think it's TJ Latif. Let me maybe. look at the, the offer list real quick. It's not on the offer list. Yeah, he's He's kind of new to me. I don't know too much about him. It's L A T I F, I believe. Isn't it? L A T I F. Let's see. Yeah, T J Latif. That's what how, it is. How do you spell it? L A T E E F. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking at his Twitter right now. Six two one ninety from Orange Lutheran High School in Los Angeles. You know, you know what I wanted to say about quarterbacks. Is Hugh Freeze? We see Georgia and Alabama do this all the time. Is Auburn finally going to go national for quarterbacks like Hugh Freeze did when he was at Ole Miss? I mean, Hugh Freeze went national in recruiting period, right? Would I mean, you, would you consider Arkansas national? I mean, it kind of, no. right? I, 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 I would, the, but, it's, but I mean, you know, Gus did it with Cody, um, with Kyle Frazier, so it's not yeah. really anything new. Uh, but like going to see an Alabama go to California and Georgia can go to uh, you know Ohio and uh, whatever it is, and I thought you know what Hugh Freeze ain't scared to do that either, and he, no. and, he and he's won some of those. So well, you Auburn also have just, Ron Montgomery, who's from Ohio, is in, yeah. in the mix as well. You know what I, I think he was a um, a Philip Montgomery guy. Yeah, I'm right. Not I'm right. not sure where. I, I, I really honestly he was planning on visiting Auburn today. 17th of January. He was planning on being here. And Philip Montgomery, I believe, got kind of wind of that he wouldn't be back. Because like two days before he got canned, he was like, yeah, why don't you schedule that for the spring? So they went to Georgia and Alabama this week and did not come to Auburn. because right. of that. And they're aware of where K.J. Lacey stands on the board. All right, so to answer Welder's question, um, interest, I don't know. 
I mean, obviously, Juju Lewis is coming. KJ Lacey's been here a thousand times. Uh, the kid from California, I'll, I I would put him over here until he shows up. Yeah, I don't know much about him. Yeah, I mean, at, to answer your question about is Hugh Freeze going to go national, I think they got to have some success first before they can go national. Okay. I think that was, you know, Hugh has some success with some local guys first and then got Chad Kelly out of JUCO. And that was, you know, Bo Wallace – Chad Kelly back to back, and then they started branching out and being able to really pull in national type quarterbacks. I think they're going to have to show some production at that position before. I think to- yeah, that's fair. I think. Tell you what, they- I, I think the plan is to never have to go to the portal again for a quarterback. <laughs> that's definitely the plan. Don't I don't want to have to even look at the portal for a quarterback. It's less expensive. Holy so cow, those dudes are overvalued. <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, I don't yeah. know if they're overvalued. Uh, it, I mean, is Cam Ward worth you know two million dollars to Miami? I don't know. I, I, I don't. I'm just throwing that number out there. By the way, I haven't seen anything. I guess it's more. What's the probability that he is? Because if he brings Miami a national championship, he's probably worth it. But every how, bit of it. How do you know though? How do you know? I mean, you could go. Caleb Williams was worth every penny. Right. Yeah. Except their defense was so bad, it didn't matter. Um, but anyways, welders. Uh, I think KJ Lacey and Juju Lewis easily are the top two quarterbacks in 2025. I, I will say that, and I think Auburn's as of right now has a good shot to get at least one of them. I do. Ranking Jayhead, I'm curious on the second part of that question. <laughs> Cam Newton was worth every penny. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no doubt he sure, sure was. was. <laughs> if he um, didn't get paid, he was doing it wrong. <laughs> if Auburn didn't pay him, they were yeah, doing right. it wrong. Right. Uh, Jayhead, I'm curious. I don't I don't know much about the Latif guy, but between the two, Lacey and Lewis, who how would you who who gets the edge, I guess, as the player? Juju Lewis, and it's not close to me. I I, I totally agree. I was hoping you'd say that. <laughs> <laughs> Juju Lewis, and it's not close. And, and that's not a knock at KJ Lacey. I think no, he he's good too. Outstanding quarterback. I think Juju Lewis is a He's a, almost a surefire NFL type. Yeah. You know, it's all got to come together for him in college. But I would dare say this is – I mean, that shades of Trevor Lawrence with the way he can actually – with the kind of arm talent he's got. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm. B-Dye. He's uh, not, not P-Dye, but B-Dye. Pat Dye. Mm. Uh, who are your most important recruits – who are Auburn's most important recruits? This is a good question because, you know, these, this 2025 class is going to be talked about more and more and more and more and more. So we start need to get get ready, uh, get our listeners, our members familiar with some of these top dogs. So most important recruits in 2025 off the top of my head. Some of them we've already mentioned. I think Mikey Dubose, Mikey Dubose yes. is on there. Number one for me. Yep. Naeem Offord. Uh, Naeem Offord. Five really star. Don't- you don't have to look past the state of Alabama too much. Yeah. I was, I, you know what? I was pulling up Alabama's rankings, and I, and I think we talked about this last week, but you look at the top 20 from Alabama, and you yep. could probably find eight. Naeem Alford, Mikey DeBose, Zion Grady, Jared Smith, Anquan Feekins, K.J. Yeah. Lacey, Derek Smith, Alvin Henderson, Eric Winters. Yep. 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 All these committed, 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 committed. Malik's committed. Well, that's the you know, like Georgia, California, Texas, those states are just loaded every year. Oh yeah, and, and they're and they're deep. But when you look at the top ten in each state, I mean, Alabama's as good as anybody, man. Per top capital. ten in Alabama, yeah. Did you see in twenty twenty four, Alabama had five five stars, and it was second in the country only yep. to Texas, which had eight. I believe it. Fantastic class, and I think this twenty twenty five class is going to rival. The 2024 class. Now you lose Ryan Williams, yes, to the 2024. Otherwise, I'd say it's them might be as good. But there were five five stars from the state of Alabama: Mbakwe, Ryan Williams, Cam Coleman, Perry Thompson. Yes, Riddick fell out. I can't remember who the other one. I'm guessing it went to right, Alabama. So is the kid Jordan Ross that went to Tennessee? Damn, he was a five star. Great day. Yeah. I guess maybe by one service. I'm looking. I'm looking back at the. Uh, Ross, you're right. The 2022 class. Um, Antonio Kite was the number eight player in the state. 
four star guy who was a Jordan Russell's a five on twenty four seven. If I remember right, it's the twenty twenty two class where we got absolutely embarrassed um, and only landed <laughs> one prospect in the top fifteen. So yeah, yeah. how about that weather? <laughs> you got you got uh, one guy in the top ten in the state of Alabama in 2022, and it was Robert Woodyard. The Pearly Gates. Gates. The Cole, uh, the Pearly Gates. Cole, is your confidence in Auburn landing Ryan Williams not as high because your confidence in Auburn flipping KJ Lacey is not as high as it was a month ago? Okay, man, people um, freaked out about that, didn't they, Cole? Yeah, they did. Uh, My goodness, I, I've learned to ignore it. I have learned to ignore it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I had put something up about KJ Lacey. Uh, maybe a, it's been a couple weeks now. Mm-hmm. I was hearing that Auburn was just absolutely in position to make something happen with KJ Lacey from a couple of different sources that I trust. Okay. Sure. When I put that out, out there, I then had a conversation. It wasn't, it wasn't related to the post I made. I was just, you know, trying digging for information, talking to people. And the question was asked to me, you know, where's that confidence coming from on KJ Lacey? And it, it made me pause. I was like, okay. Uh, yeah. You know, this person that asked me that question is somebody that would definitely know. And they weren't a hundred percent. So when I got that, I was like, okay, let's, let's take a step back here. You know, talk to you, you, you people that are affiliated with Texas, tried to figure out everything I could with this one. The consensus is Auburn's in this. They do have a chance to flip him, but it's not as high as I thought when I first made the post. Mm -hmm. Now, as it pertains to Ryan Williams, I do think landing KJ Lacey absolutely helps you with Ryan Williams. I don't see how it would hurt. Definitely can't hurt. Is it the end all? No, I don't think so. I don't think you have to have KJ Lacey in order to get Ryan Williams. But being that Texas is that other school that seems to be right up there with Auburn for Ryan Williams, I don't think it's just an interesting dynamic. I think you would rather have KJ Lacey on your side. Put it that way. Sure. I agree with that. I, I think that's fair. And, and given the caliber of team you're recruiting against, Alabama is still Alabama. I, I know they've got a brand new coach, new relationships. Ryan's a relationship guy. Okay, they, I mean, I think he's on record as saying that. It's going to be hard when you're recruiting of those caliber teams to say, hey, he's 100% Auburn lock. I mean, I, I think you're not hedging, but you're just wanting to see how the visits go before you make a final prediction and say, hey, I'm confident Ryan Williams is coming to Auburn. And I don't know how you could be 100% confident when the kid's taking five visits in the month of January. <laughs> I mean, I'll say another night, man. I, if, if somebody, it's not how recruiting works anymore. No, I don't, no, I don't care not. what he. I don't care what he told Ocas back in December. <laughs> I don't care. It doesn't mean anything. No. All right, um, all right. Tiger four eyes. Tiger for eyes. Tiger four eyes. Who wears glasses? Any more portal additions? <laughs> right. Tiger four eyes. Right. He was I, like, yeah, I, 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 I agree. I'd say Tiger Four Eyes. Uh, yeah. Any more portal additions for the spring semester and the last day to be eligible? Well, the last day to be eligible is today, Wednesday, January the 17th. Uh, I was told that Auburn could f- figure out there's some wiggle room to get him in there through the weekends if they want to. But as far as I know, and I probably can speak for everybody here, I think we've already mentioned it, the only one we are aware of right now is Antonio Kite, the transfer defensive back from, uh, from Alabama, who we expect to be on campus today, Wednesday. I'm going to screw everybody up with my todays, but uh, that's a, uh, oh, 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 for the spring. Some, yeah, that's right. That's right. That's what he's asking about. So, yeah, maybe one more Antonio Kai. If there's somebody else, we're not aware of it. Let's put it that way. Right. I mean, right. it, you guys will report on it if they pop up on campus. Sure. Obviously, you know, we're on the look for it, but nothing that we expect at this point. And, you know, we've been hearing about Antonio since he first, it was rumored he was entering the portal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not seeing mm-hmm. much movement right now with, with portal targets. So it, right. I think if, it, if it were one, it, it may be a, a defensive lineman, but I, I don't know any names. So, well, yeah. And with a new defensive coordinator coming in, you probably want his eyes. Like Cole said, they're going to evaluate some rooms in the spring before they decide, yes. hey, where do we want to spend these spots? Yep. Mm-hmm. Speaking of, uh, let's see here, Monday 87, which coordinator candidate uh, 
And let's see, there's Derek Nixon, offensive coordinator, uh, that candidate. I mean, there's a couple other guys. Then defense coordinator, Chris Kiffin, uh, Zach Arnett. Which which guy candidate moves the needle the most in recruiting? I, I would think I would think Chris Kiffin on defense of the candidates, wouldn't you? Yeah, just because he's an NFL guy and at a you know at a playoff NFL team. I mean, none of, none of them are like elite recruiters. Like, not that I. I mean, it's kind of different these days. I don't know how much your coordinators really get involved, especially at Auburn, right? Yeah, I think DJ Durkin's got some legitimate skins on the wall. It, I, how under consideration is he? I don't know. I, I know he's a name that's been vetted. Uh, Chris Kiffin obviously has some major victories in recruiting, but that was six years ago now at this point. So he's been removed. He's been in the NFL for a while. But from a, a sales standpoint, and that's what recruiting is, right? Recruiting is sales. Mm -hmm. It is hospitality. It is pitch. You can pitch an NFL guy, okay, yeah. especially one that's accomplished what he's accomplished with the last name of Kiffin. Yeah. When your dad's Monty Kiffin, okay, it's an easy sale to say, hey, I know what it looks like in the league. I just came out of the league. I can get you to the league. So I think you're right. I think that is the, probably the splashiest name. But, look, I think Zach Arnett is an underrated recruiter. He's a young guy. Energetic. I like Zach Arnett. Uh, I think DJ Jerkins a good recruiter. I think Tom Allen is another mm -hmm. name that's been rumored. Good contacts in Florida. I, I think he'd be a, a plus recruiter at Auburn. So a lot of guys recruit a lot better with that Auburn logo on their chest. Than they do sure. it some places they've been. Sure, to. yeah. There, so, there are two sides of a coordinator recruiting. The first side is what you just mentioned, Jay Head, where you know it's an NFL, I can sell you as an NFL guy. That's that's always good for for sales. You know, selling to a recruit. Then you have the the scheme part, which I didn't think was – it is a big deal. I mean, it's not what they sit there and talk about over and over. They have to have the relationship. But, I mean, a guy like Jamonte Waller, he was very impressed with what Ron Roberts did with the Jacks and, sure. and what he's done throughout history and with Jacks that are maybe a little bit undersized. Uh, and that's why – that was a big reason why he chose Auburn. So, yeah, that that's going to matter to certain positions. If, if the defensive coordinator comes in and he is – solely over the edges, you might see an uptick in that. NH2775, 2025 line of scrimmage, top 10 wants. Woo. Great day, yes, sir. I, I can get you mine right quick. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to go Micah DeBose, number one on the offensive line. Tavares Dice, number two. Mm -hmm. Braden Jacobs, number three. I want three tackles out the gate. <laughs> um, Glover and then probably the kid from Parkview um, he was just on campus this past weekend I like Mal Waldrop I think he's still a developmental guy let me kid from Parkview I'm blanking give me just a second I'll have it for you um did you say dice? Yes. Yeah, Tavares dice. dice. Um, Dontrell Glover, Michael DeBose, Braden Jacobs, and I'll get the kid's name. Give me just a second. I, just, I'm pretty much with you on all those guys. Jay had the one I might throw in there. I, I like the Josh Petty kid who has been the I mean, if we're talking wants here, that's sure. been to campus a couple times. Uh, and he's realistic, I would say, because he's supposed – I think he's supposed to show up again at some point. Cortez Smith. There you oh, go. yeah, Cortez. Cortez. He because, did not make it. Because I think he can play center. I think if I'm looking to fill all of my holes across the offensive line, I think that young man can play center. I agree. Uh, the other one I'd throw in there would probably be uh, Juan Gaston. I think that yeah. guy's ridiculous. He's very good. Defense line, hell, you're already booked up. You've got four committed. Look, we you, talked you, about you throw Maddox. Maddox in there, and I think you got a done deal, a stellar D line class. Uh, yeah, uh, I would not disagree with you on that one. And again, Cole, you already mentioned it. His brother's committed, or excuse me, signed with Ole Miss, so that's going to be a tough pull. But Jeremy Garrett's got some confidence. Okay, yeah. he's got yeah. some swagger to him right now, and and he's hot on the trail. So let's let's see how this one plays out. 
Yeah, I was looking over the offers. I don't see anybody else's name jumping out at me. That Kevin Otis kid. Um, yeah, Justice Terry from Georgia's one. Justice that, Terry, yeah. He's he from Buford. Manchester. Manchester, Georgia. He's committed to Georgia. That's one. Uh, oh, yeah, I really yeah, like, yeah. I love London Merritt. I think he's more of an edge guy, but London Merritt is really, really high on my list. I think I actually talked to him. He, he told me he wasn't going to be at Junior Day or – the visit last weekend. He said he was going to be there eventually, though. So that's one to track. All right. Let's see. BBP, Walker White or Hank Brown. Who has the biggest upside, folks? Walker White. Walker White. Not, all right. Not, not a knock at Hank Brown. Okay. No. But I think as far as overall traits and tools, Walker's got a deeper bag right now. Doesn't mean that he processes the game as quickly as Hank. I don't sure. know that. You know what I mean? And that is a huge part of it. Look, Drew Brees, not winning a wet T-shirt contest, brother. You know what I mean? Like, you, you roll him out there, you're not thinking he's an NFL quarterback. And yep. yet, he's one of the best that's ever done it. So, mm. we'll see what it happens when, when when the game action's live. Oh, Robert Dale won back. Which 2024 signees do you expect to be in the two deep in August? Who 2024 signings, Laquan Robinson, for sure yeah. for me. Yeah. I think he's absolutely in the two deep. I think Seth Wilford's in the two deep. I think yep. he's your right tackle moving into next year, if I'm being honest. I agree. Um, are we counting transfers or are we counting just signings? 2024 class. I mean, all this uh, – uh, uh, I'm, you know, Cam Coleman's in the two deep. Perry Thompson's in the two yeah, deep. Yeah, Perry Thompson, Cam Coleman. Both those guys for sure. I'll give. I'll, I'll give. I'll read them off. Y'all say yeah or nay. Demarcus Riddick. At this point, yes. Yes. Morris. Morris Williams. Yes. No. Joseph Phillips. Mm, right on the edge. Too deep. Very, very close. Jamonte Waller. Yes. Uh, DeAndre Carter, Malcolm mm. Simmons, Bryce Kane. No. Uh, Jalen Crawford. No. No. TJ Lindsay. Yes. Too deep. Uh, not not quite. Yeah, I hear you. I'm on lane. No, Gainus, no. Malik Blockton. No. no. It's gonna be tough for these guys, especially on the line of scrimmage, right? And look, I think Amaris Williams is Amaris, correct? Amaris, yes. yes. Amaris. I'm getting it, I'm getting it right, big dog. I promise. You're doing good. <laughs> but he's right on the edge to me. I I have a Hard time wondering where he if he plays over Zeke Walker in the two deep because obviously right now Keldrick Falk is your starting five technique. Zeke has backed him up. Does Amaris Williams jump Zeke? I think he's capable of doing it, but out the gate, I don't know if he's in the two deep right away. Kinsley Falston, no. no. Seth Wilfred, yes. In DJ, my yeah. DJ Barber, close. No. I hear you, Caleb Harris. No, Mm-mm. no favor. No towns. Magoo will be, uh, yeah, <laughs> top two. Uh, let's see. Top Percy, two. Percy, Percy Lewis, you're hoping he's your starting left tackle. Yeah. Sharon Thompson, you're hoping he's a starting yep. safety along with Laquan Robinson. Sam Jackson is, um, no, he's not in the two deep. Line. Yeah. Probably not. Uh, Rico Walker's probably not top too deep. No. no. Gage Keys, Drill Carter. Yes. yes. Better be right. They, got, they have to be. They don't have a choice. <laughs> Dorian Mausi. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. And Robert Lewis better yes. be. Yeah. All right. Good stuff. Welders they use back, man. Uh, these guys must have been the only two on the corner when Jay had posted the <laughs> thread. <laughs> <laughs> Any news on offer that a Birmingham? The kid is a stud, folks. He's he a five star. Where does Auburn sit in his recruitment? Shit, man. I I, I would have said a month ago they're a team to beat. Yeah. Uh, my my one drawback to saying they were the team to beat was Alabama, and now that's changed a lot. Now, I haven't talked to him since all that has gone down, but you would have to believe that T-Rob was a big deal for him mm-hmm. yes. at Alabama, and, and now he's going to be a big deal for him at Georgia because I know Georgia was in the mix. Don't sleep on Ohio State with Naeem Offord. No, he I likes wouldn't. Ohio State. Okay. Now, I don't know if he would go as far as to actually go there, but – they're in the mix. Um, I, I'd say just with everything that's happened here in the last few weeks, it, it would be hard for me to say that if today were signing day, it might not be Auburn that he chooses. But 
again, it's not signing day. We have a long way to go. I think Auburn's in good shape, though. I'll put it that way. Yeah, yeah, it wouldn't be the first time Ohio State's come down south and 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 grabbed, you know, planted their flag and grabbed the kid. And I don't know if you guys have been paying attention to the guys that they retained from going into the NFL draft. Ohio State found some NIL money, guys. So yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, it, do not put them out of that category. I'm with you on that one, Cole. Uh, and we've had some transition as well. Zach, Zach Etheridge, I think, was the lead recruiter there for Naeem Offord. That's what I said now, I mean, a month ago. Right. Now, Wes McGriff was, I think, also involved yeah, he there. Was a, honestly, Cadillac Williams was a big deal in Naeem Offords. He was his uh, – I think he was his area guy. Sure was. Right. So, he, he mentioned him a lot. Uh, Naeem's always mentioned him, so – there's been some turmoil. Don't don't tell all the meat for free that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Decon twenty four. There's been some shake up with Naeem, that's for sure, all around. Yeah. Uh, which positional group freshman uh has a chance at making the biggest impact in year one? Better be the wide receivers. Yeah. It's gotta be a receiver and then linebacker. Yeah. Yeah. Fair. Which are the two best that you signed, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. No question about it. Uh, average Bavarian. Bavarian? If it was a Morris, it's going to be a Bavarian. There you go. <laughs> uh, what player were you most excited about and thought they would end up being a key player and didn't in the end? You know, I thought you you said a great name last night on our Sunday night on the Collins show. Do you remember this? Freaking no. Raven Gray. Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Raven Gray. And I wasn't I, – I don't, I don't get excited about anybody, but – that that was a guy that was a huge recruitment and Auburn, you know, held him off in the end and signed this local kid who was Auburn fan, five star, big time. And I think he got about as many tackles as I did. Oh, one hundred percent. Now he's holding up liquor stores. So you know what I mean? <laughs> I think it was like JUCO and Yeah, he had to go to JUCO. You know, him and Greg Smith. The the man. <clears throat> the story of those two going to junior man. college, coming to Auburn, five star guys. Oh, Greg Smith, yeah. Oh yeah, man. Golly, he sure was, dude. That dude didn't have a neck. No, remember that? <laughs> Got kicked off campus in a heartbeat too. <laughs> there's a there's so many names here that you could go with. Unfortunately, Auburn has a success rate with five stars of about fifteen twenty percent. Like yeah. whenever every five five stars have really panned out. Byron uh, Cowart. Um, that's a good one, Calvin Ashley. That's a good one. Um, Antoine Jackson, remember him? Yeah, I, I thought did he, he go to Ohio State. He, did. he ended up going to Ohio State out of he went to Juco, I think. Nate Craig Myers, Zach says in the back, Kyle Davis. Craig Myers. Yeah, I'll tell you one, and he had some moderate success at Auburn, but not what I thought he would have with Mario Fannin. I thought that kid, when we signed him, yeah, when Auburn signed Mario Fannin, I he thought five star, he was a four star. He wasn't, okay. it, oh, you're was, just in general, the question here. Yeah, they said, What player were you most excited about and thought they would end up being a key player? And if you look, Trey Blackman, who had success, oh, yeah. absolutely, he, he never turned out exactly. I mean, I thought he was an NFL guy, man. And so he was probably the most hyped that I can remember that just didn't flush out. At, that's my guy. He, at, most excited about, I watched his video and thought, wow. Yeah. I'm going to get to see him play up close for the next four years. No way. This is too good to be true. <laughs> yeah. Like This guy is unbelievable. Him and the kid from uh, – Saint, uh, he had the best defensive highlights I've ever seen. And then the little running back from, uh, from Florida, no oh, yeah. No way. No divine. No, no, oh, no yeah. divine. Yes, yeah. dude. Best two high school video how West I've Virginia. ever seen. I think he went to West Virginia. Right? Yeah, he sure did. He did and played. Wasn't it him guys. and Pat White? Wasn't that Rock the duo? Thomas. Rock Thomas was another one, Zach says. Oh, yeah. Rock Thomas. I thought he so, was. So, I mean, the, the success rate for Auburn and five stars, not how about, good. How about Joey Gatewood? Oh, uh, oh. Hey, he was the number he was the number one overall recruit in your 2018 class. Quarterback, 6'5", 230, drawing cam comparisons. I, that was before I really got into watching all these guys' tapes. So everything I'd heard about him, I, I was like, oh, that guy's perfect for what Gus is doing, you know? When I watched him play, I, I immediately thought, bus city, man. I'm going to be Jimmy Johnson. <laughs> hey, Connors Miller. Connors Miller was one I thought was going to be awesome, too. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 
Let's see. Bonus question. Slack daddy. To piggyback off of Cole's post, where do y'all's pet peeves? Oh, this was a great. Cole, I went through your pet peeve list and I was like, thank. listen, I had just earlier in the day went to freaking Milo's. I had the cup the other day, right? Went to Milo's and this guy pulls up and he's like, yeah, let me get a cheeseburger, but hold the onions and no Milo sauce. And I'm like, why would you go to Milo's and order a cheese uh, or a burger with no onions and no Milo sauce? Like freaking Burger King's down the road, big dog. And, and I was like, man, you know, that's what I, I, I'm trying to be considerate, right? Let me get the number number two. Yeah, I, I'm right. trying to decide if I want number one or number two. Number two right. is the sweet tea, big now, dog. When I said that, I, I get it. If you don't like pickles or something and you ask for no pickles, that's fine. Sure. Don't have a problem with that. Sure. It's when you're like, honestly, are you going to wife, Wendy's and order a turkey wrap? It. It's my wife that likes to do it, and she'll admit it. We because we <laughs> talked about it the other night. I was like, you know, I, I put one of my pet peeves on the board, and uh, <laughs> anyway, it's like this just this incredibly complicated order that you know they're not going to know how to do it, and, and or they hadn't done it in a long time, or or it's going to take twenty extra minutes to do it. It gives me anxiety, real anxiety i can't stand it when they ask you if you're in a drive-thru and they hey can you pull a number one right there i'm like i can't stand it can't stand it listen the louverne uh jacks and the mcdonald's and louverne yeah. both of them listen i'm the only one in the drive-thru and and i pull up i handle my credit card and they go can you pull up over there in the, in the spot one i said nope i'm not <laughs> you know why because it takes you off the clock from getting my food in a timely fashion that's right. So I'm not partaking in your cheating in your cheating system here. I mean, there's nobody behind me, big dog. Why you want me to pull up? I ain't doing it. I hate it. <laughs> Give me hate my it. food. And, and yeah, I know what they're doing and, to it back there. There were some if y'all if y'all read through that thread, and, and I, I would like to know some of y'all's honestly, if we have a minute or two here. One of them, somebody brought up, and I forgot all about it. Hazard lights in the rain. I have learned this is a really, really touchy subject, hazard lights in the rain. Some people are gung-ho that you got to turn your hazards on in the rain because it helps people behind you see them so you don't come up on somebody and hit them. Me, on the other hand, somebody who has an astigmatism, lights go crazy for me a lot. Uh, I can't stand it. It, it. it gives me anxiety. I feel like I, I don't know when you're braking. I don't know when you're turning, all this stuff. I can see you. In the rain, when you do the hazard lights, it confuses me. You mean like any like I would have to be like going fifteen miles an hour, you, you and see, you can't hardly see. It's very rare that I would turn on my hazard lights. It, it, there are people who truly believe that if you don't, you're 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 wrong. But it's actually the opposite. It's illegal to turn on your hazards while driving. It doesn't matter if it's raining or not. Driving and turning on your hazard lights. Is illegal in a lot of states, whether it's raining or whatever. Uh, pet peeve for me: people who text when they drive. I I literally want oh. to get up beside them. You know what I mean? And be like, "Roll your window down, man. Yeah. Get off the phone." <laughs> oh boy, I drove past this old cat. It, it looked like he was on one of them old cellular phones with the core. You know, he was in the left lane in a sixty-five mile per hour zone, going fifty-five. 56 in the left lane and i drove past him i gave him a honk and i looked at him i gave him that death stare oh like, yeah and i was like then i, I gave him this right here yep yeah oh yeah <laughs> I'll, I'll throw that one out <laughs> yeah now when you pass him you just look at him and go uh, idiot oh yeah i'll do it all the time <laughs> he, was, he was like you you you're gonna make somebody run us off the road yeah that's why i pack that nine right here no i'm just <laughs> Uh, all right, let's get some how about you. Okay. I've got, uh, uh, I've got five. Oh, wow. Okay. Cole, you go ahead and start me tonight, man. I I, I got one for sure. I want to take a look at one other. All right. Pulling up my list here. I, I don't have that many. I haven't bookmarked a lot this week. Um, B die. All right. Yeah. Popular name tonight. <laughs> His, golly, he had such a good response is not been there okay y'all know the picture you know what? he's gonna be my only one because i gotta explain this the picture that perry thompson posted on his instagram before everything happened with him it's like two paths 
and you got one guy going one way and the whole crowd's going the other way. Y'all remember this picture? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now a lot of recruits have started putting that picture out. And I just, you know, I retweeted a couple times because I know people remember that picture. So somebody made a thread and said, I feel like I'm missing something here. Can someone explain the significance of this picture? And this is really dumb, but b responded, you're adopted. That's what that means. And it just was really funny to me. It caught me funny. So that's my guy right there. <laughs> I know that makes no sense, but it was hilarious to me. <laughs> I've had those days go. We all have. I mean, yeah, it was, it was a slow news yeah. day. I was like, man, that was funny. Matter of fact, I, I screenshot my Hibachis. And man, what I thought was hilarious three days ago, it's like, that doesn't make sense. Is, I must hilarious. have been in a good mood. I still think it's hilarious. As, I, as so a, I hear you, B Dog. A week later. <laughs> All right, B Dog, what you got, Jay Head? I got Coach J Atlanta. And that's Coach underscore J underscore Atlanta. Thank you very much. Uh, Tyler Justice. Yeah, you guys want to give him a how about you? Oh, TJ. Yeah, uh, big sexy. Okay, he made me laugh this week. And then uh, War Eagle GSU. Oh yeah, yeah, he's been good. All right, uh, let's see here. I got you. How about you to uh, B's five? Not to be confused with D's. Mm. Um, how about you to LJ Tiger? How about you to JBB7107? How about you to WDE280, who made uh, the corner? Uh, remember the Nick Saban guy? He was like, oh, hey, have oh, y'all yeah. heard, yeah. heard anything about Nick Saban? Yeah. On yeah, the that meet was today? Good. That was that right was before. Good. Now, to be fair now, 280, you didn't, you didn't, you, you were all questions. Do you think this could be possible? And remember message board genius? They, they thought they were going to make him look bad. And yeah. Uh, yeah, they made yeah, more oh, geniuses came out later after that happened because it got shared so many times when Nick Saban actually retired. They were like, guys, it's just satire, it's just supposed to be funny. Yeah, you got your ass handed to you, big dog. Come Pretty on, much. man. Got your it, ass how about acknowledge you. that? Uh, if y'all watch, man, message board geniuses, our guy had it right, dude. At least he was on it. Nobody else was on it. You watched our show the night before. Jay was like, man, that's that ain't happening. <laughs> And I was like, yeah, I agree. I said it was horseshit, bro. That is, yeah, I, I would have. I probably agree with you. In my in my defense, I had been told Saban was interviewing defensive coordinators and wide receiver coaches. Like I'm thinking, no way in hell is a guy who's interviewing staff members is retiring. That's and then he just uh, look. I, I think people close to the situation felt that way, Jay. That's well, that's the way I've gathered this. It does not seem like this was premeditated all that much. No, I think he's been contemplating it. I think he'd been contemplating it. My guess is he had told his AD at some point, like, hey, I'm thinking about this. I'm not doing it, but I'm thinking about it. And then he just got to a point where he said, man, I, I can't. And good for him, man. Look, say what you want about Nick Saban. He's the best. He is, he is the best college football coach of my lifetime. Sure I didn't experience that time. You know what I mean? Didn't experience it, and him retiring had to be that Bear Bryant moment for, like, Jeffrey's dad and my dad. Like, where were you when Bear Bryant stepped yeah. away or when Pat Dye stepped away? You know, for Auburn mm. fans, that's what it had to be like for, for my, Alabama that day. When that notification came through my phone, my jaw dropped. I was like, what? Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah, I man. I thought it was not true, you know. that I had to go, like, fact check it. Mm. Boy, it's going to be fun. We'll see, we'll see what happens. Um, all right, let's uh, let's end it there, folks. We will. Uh, what's today? Wednesday. When you're listening to it, we'll be back. We will be back Sunday night for the call-in show at 6:30 p.m. Central Time on our YouTube page. If you haven't already, go to our YouTube page. You're already on there. Really, uh, hit that like. Uh, hit that subscribe button. I don't know what like it doesn't. I don't care if you like it. How about just subscribing to their YouTube channel? Hit those notifications so you'll get new uh, notifications on the basketball shows, the call-in shows, in case you forget, and our, our weekly recruiting show as well. That's going to do it. Let's wrap it up there. We'll see you Sunday night, man. Uh, for Cole, for Jay Head, for Zach in the back, I'm Jeffrey Lee. Man, y'all stay at that left lane.